In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about why I ended up replacing my Motu Ultralight MK4 with a Native Instruments Complete Audio 6. Kind of an odd comparison. Ready, set, let's go. Hey everybody, Sky Deep here, and I am a musician, a VR enthusiast, and multimedia artist in general. Even when I'm doing other things, I always bring it back to the music. We are going to take a look at the Native Instruments Complete Audio 6. I haven't really done many unboxings, but this week I have so much work to do that uh, that's the first place we get to start. I did not intend on buying this particular interface. I was sort of forced into it, to be honest. My Motu broke down on me. I was in the middle of updating the firmware. It's supposed to be a routine thing. And even this firmware had come out like maybe a year ago. So I was a little bit overdue. Just before getting into work uh, on my next sound design project, as I was updating the firmware, it got stuck. The, the actual device got stuck in update mode. Every time I turned it back on, the software inside the device was stuck. So I'm gonna have to send that in and get some repairs, but I must say I absolutely love that device, but since it's gonna take a while, I had to get something else. And not a bad idea for me to just have backup in general in case something like this were ever to happen again. So I was looking for something that would have enough inputs and outputs, but that also would serve as a MIDI interface for me for when I need it. Uh, and so after looking at several devices on the market, even you know some other offerings by Motu, it turns out everything was sold out in the store. Okay, everybody's buying audio interfaces right now. Who knew? So uh, this was actually the last thing in stock. And uh, I'm actually pretty excited about it because of the software that I hear comes with it. But since I have so much work to do and I am behind schedule, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open this with you and I'm gonna get it set up into my computer and just give some basic first impressions. Here we go. So uh, I don't really care that much about the box itself. I, I present to you the box. box. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, look at that box. Oh. Mm hmm. Okay, let's just get in there. The box has been opened, it has been unboxed. Okay, got a little gift here. Looks like a little gift card or something. But of course it's the regular documentation as well as some stickers of which I'm really into stickers actually. Uh, I find them fantastic for my guitar case. If and when travel ever happens again, I'll have some new stickers. All right, and uh, inside, let's just get in here. Oh my God, it's wrapped in plastic. Okay, let's just open this up. But already I can say it's kind of cool. I mean, it, it feels really solid. I was concerned that maybe it wouldn't feel as solid as my Motu, which is by the way, built like a tank. Like it is a beast. But you know what? This ain't bad, this ain't bad. Smaller, which is nice too. Okay, already I'm getting fingerprints on it. Well, let's see what else is in the box. So of course we have our interface. Good, yep. And the USB cable, that's it. I'm gonna get rid of this got our interface, we've got our USB cable. And uh, the most interesting thing about this for me is that it is purely bus powered. I have already done some pre-research on this. I didn't buy it blindly. So I have heard that the volume levels that come out of this particular interface are lower. And I'm imagining that's because uh, there is no external power source. 
but I think that's going to be fine because I can always adjust my speakers or, you know, my output settings in the studio. I think I can live with it, at least temporarily until I get the Motu back. Uh, yeah, let's just take a look here. Already I've got my fingerprints on it. One of the first things I recognize is this sort of shiny, glossy top. I mean, let me treat this baby right. You know what I'm saying? Got the little microfiber cloth. Let's just, let's just buff that, you know, wax on, wax off. I feel better now. Okay, so we've got our two combo input slots for microphone or an instrument jack right there on the front. Each has its own gain knob, a line versus an instrument toggle for our input strength. Then we have a mono versus stereo switch, which is pretty nice. Of course, we have the uh, Phantom Power 48 volt switch, which looks like, I guess it works for both the channels, not just one. I also have a toggle for uh, channels one and two or channels three and four. So I'm guessing that that's for the monitoring um, here on the front, maybe for the headphones, which we have two headphone jacks, as well as some type of a balance uh, switch, which uh, we can get more of the input feed or more of the main mix feed, looks like to the headphones. Uh, one thing I'm, I'm pretty impressed with actually, and, and just kind of aesthetically feels nice, but also feels really useful, the placement of it, is this master output volume knob here on the top. Um, I, I was a little bit turned off by some of the SSL interfaces because everything seemed to be on top of the interface. And I'm, I like things that are more front uh, focused, but I do appreciate having at least just this volume knob on top because it's separate, it's nice and big, easy to reach. And that's probably what I'm using more often than not. Also here, uh, I do appreciate that there's some metering available right there on the top too, just to, eh, I don't know, it's good looking. I think it's a nice design. On the back, we have four balanced outputs of a quarter inch jack. Uh, we also have two more quarter inch inputs. And then we also have a spit of input and a spit of output for a little bit more expandability. And as we see here, our MIDI input and MIDI output, and of course our USB. So it's pretty straight ahead, but you know, why did I have to get this thing? I literally cannot do my work without a working interface. I need to get all the sounds from either my voice or from my synthesizers into my DAW so I can do final mix downs. So I'm just happy I have something and now I guess I can set it up. Oh yeah, the pretty blue lights. See if it shows up inside Ableton Live already. Yeah, I mean, it shows up immediately, right? Class compliant, I don't need to install anything. No, I didn't read the directions, I just went for it, right? Uh, but it's pretty self-explanatory once you're used to these devices. I do feel the need that I must keep wiping off this top. I mean, those are the basics, that's what you do. I just turned on the phantom power. And now I'm gonna see about what type of input I'm getting in here. Check one, two. Yeah, I'm increasing the gain, I'm increasing the gain. Yeah, so obviously this is not the perfect setup. I'm just trying to see if it works. And yes, it does. So, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, so I will say, you know, just as a quick test, straight away, it already seems like I have to push the gain a little farther than I normally would when I'm on the Motu. 
Um, so my mic technique, if I were recording vocals, would have to be even more precision. I think I'd have to be really right up on the mic. Either way, I know that I have a working device. So let me know if you have any questions about this box that I can specifically test out and answer. If this video was helpful at all to you, and if you wanna see uh, more content about audio production and my creative process, please do subscribe, click like, and click the bell if you wanna be notified each time that I upload a video. So now I've gotta to get to work. I can give you much more of a comparison or an analysis down the line. I can give a full review. But for now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next round.